Good evening. Today is April 5th, 2018, and welcome to the Ruben Hoare Library Board of Trustees meeting. My name is Demetra Taylor. I'm vice chair. I'll be filling in for Jenna Brownson, who is chair and is unable to make the meeting tonight. Okay, um, we're going to start with our agenda public participation. Do we have any? Um, then we will move on to our next piece, which is correspondence. No correspondence. Approval of minutes from the meeting from March 1st, 2018. There is a typo on page three under old, old business. Um, it should say uh, Mrs. Carruth instead of Mr. Yes. Ms. It should say Ms. Mrs. Yeah. Carruth. I think the minutes look excellent. <laughs> I think they look great too. I, I was in that last <laughs> meeting, but they look great to me. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, then. Um, treasurer's report. Treasurer's report. Okay. Uh, we did receive the Bartholomew, the latest. Okay, you all have a copy. Okay. And <coughs> the. Uh, our uh, accounts, the MMDT account um, is $5,583.10. And the building fund is $392,982.33 as of the last day of March. Okay, and I don't, I haven't heard. Um, yet how much of a total we had from um, the mini golf and I don't know where how that money gets handled. Okay, do you want to cover that now or later? Um, we can later. cover it now. Okay, so the mini golf raised a little over fifteen thousand um, dollars. It is currently the friends have an account a building fund set up. There's a friends building a fund account that they're keeping the money in at the moment and then they will transfer it over to us. Okay, that's fine. Um, and we don't have we don't have an actual number, it's just over 15. It, I don't know the exact number. I, I think they're still settling up a few bills. Okay. Um, but it's it's just over 15. However it works. Yeah, there's a few sun auction items that people haven't paid for yet, so we're still okay. waiting for that. Money. Right. Some other bills. All right. So we should have the exact amounts to announce at next month's meeting? And I, well, you did get the, you did get the email from Steve. Yes, I'll cover that. Okay. And that is the treasurer's report. Friends report. Did anyone attend the friends meeting? I did. Much? Okay. So the friends are doing their uh, annual uh, spring book sale in May. Um, yes. Fundraising. They've been doing their, their drive. They're sending out their newsletter and um, amassing memberships right now. So it's a membership drive. Right. They're also planning to do a um, another townwide uh, garage yard sale thing like they did last year. They're still working on it. Is there a can drive coming up or a? So they, the uh, friends have can that do the cans for the month of April over at the transfer station. Okay. Um, they're still looking for volunteers. There's a sign up genius um, that people can sign up for to volunteer, um, especially more um, towards the end of the month. There's still a lot of shifts available. <coughs> right. That's not it. They didn't buy you anything last month, except the month before. Do we know the dates for the book sale in May at all? 
good. It's Mother's Day coincides with Father's Day okay. weekend because it was something about having, oh, you can publicize it by getting your mom a book. And I forget who was laughing about it. They were laughing about the fact that, no, I think, you know, it probably isn't a good <coughs> Get your mom so, a box of books. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> so it would be the weekend of the 12th of May. Yes. Okay. There will be another um, book sorting on not this Sunday, the following one. What is that, the 16th? 16th. 14th. It, on Sunday would actually be April 15th. Okay, April 15th. Yep. From 1 to 3? 1 to 3 in the Cooper room. Okay. Anything else with the Friends Report? Okay. Um, fundraising Committee Report. So I have been attending the Fundraising Committee, and the last couple meetings have really been all about um, the mini golf, which, um, as people know, happened back on uh, the 24th of March. And many of us were there. Um, spectacular, absolutely spectacular. Um, Friday evening uh, was the adult event with um, a whole host of um, donations from local restaurants. So the food was amazing. Um, there was a silent auction with many um, amazing um, donated items that people could uh, could bid on, as well as the mini golf, which I had not really fully envisioned prior to seeing it. Um, I don't know if anybody here <laughs> really had, um, but just to see the way that it was set up and the way the sponsors decorated the holes, it really was, um, it was an amazing event. I, it was definitely um, too many uh, adjectives in that sentence, but it's, it was great. I was really impressed. Um, the fundraising committee, the friends worked extremely hard um, pulling that all together, so kudos to the, everybody that was involved in that. Um, I have not discussed with them whether or not it's going to happen again, but I will certainly advocate that it should be something that happens again uh, as an annual event because I think it was uh, a really, really nice. Oh, really yeah. Yeah. Well, it really brought the community. To, I mean, so many people were here, and it just was a really nice community <coughs> event with older people and kids and you know people with families. So we had about and 150 participants on Friday, yeah. and around 300 people um, bought tickets on Saturday. Yeah. So. And that's not including the parents or whatever that were just right. Around. A lot of repeat, like people that had come Friday night with like a date night with a spouse or with friends came back on Saturday with their kids. It was really a nice. It was really a nice and I got couple Sam of days. To play around too. <laughs> <laughs> I did not get to play, so next time I'll have to actually play. Hmm. Still hearing about that gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> Sam managed on the hole going down the steps that had the little. Uh, um, channel to hit in. He managed to hit outside of the channel and get the ball to land in the lap of the gorilla. Oh, wow. There. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get extra <laughs> points for that. <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> it's quite the ringer. Yeah. <laughs> well, we should really thank Sarah Rombacher and uh, Chris, uh, Katrina, Katrina. Sorry, Katrina Wilcox for organizing the whole mini golf event with the fundraising committee and the friends because they did an incredible job. I guess. Oh, yeah. That was above and beyond. It was, it was so well organized and, and fun, and everybody I spoke to had such a great time. It ran seamlessly, it really did. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on to trustee updates. I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, last week, I went to the Littleton Business Association meet and greet. Okay, and uh, it was uh, it was well attended um, by the uh, business association, all, all the businesses in town, and I made a point of um, thanking them. I recognized some faces there from from uh, our mini golf, so I was able to thank in person some of those people and everybody in general for, for all the support that they gave us. And uh, they seemed to appreciate that as we did. So uh, it was a good time and uh, went well. So I've been attending the um, building committee, uh, town hall feasibility meetings. Uh, we had our second one 
last Wednesday. Um, they're going to be this second and fourth Wednesday of um, the month. So um, there's a lot of discussion on what the short-term needs are for the town hall versus the longer-term needs um, to try and find the other side of the building from uh, um, Council on Aging, Park and Rec, School Department have immediate needs for space that they're trying to uh, address in the very short term. And then there's the longer term needs uh, for the whole building. Um, one of the big concerns is that if anything, any renovations happen to the building, the whole building has to be renovated, which uh, drastically increases the cost. So, so there's a lot of discussion on what's going to happen what the long-term plan is, should be for the library and all the departments in this building. I'm wondering what constitutes a renovation? Any money you spend on the building that's not furniture pretty much counts as a renovation. So when they repair the roof, that counts as a renovation. There's a limit on the amount of money you can spend renovating a building before you have to bring the entire building up mm -hmm. to code. And repairing the roof counts as. So any money spent towards that, it, it, it okay, that piles up. It's, a cum it's cumulative. It's cumulative. It's over the past, I don't know, it's like how much you spend on the renovations over the past five or six years can't be more than a certain percentage of how much the building is worth or the whole building has to be bought, brought up to code. Oh, okay. So I'm just wondering if like very small things like erecting walls or something. So erecting walls would count. The sh shelving in the children's room does not count because that's furniture. Uh -huh. So it's, okay. there's a line on those different things. I'm not the expert. I'm just quoting what other people have told me. That's so. interesting. Thank you. Um, also, um, I'm just wondering the initial numbers from that report that came back, are they still using those? They are. I'm trying to get them updated, but there's still not consensus on what the numbers should be. Okay. I was just, you know, so they're, I'm just curious if they're actually using them as a baseline of real using information. The out of the PowerPoint. So. Yeah. So, what is their end plan to this, though? You're, you're, they're discussing what to do. So the end plan is to figure out what to do long term for this building and the departments in it. Whether it means the library moves out and the building gets renovated, or the library moves out and all the departments move out and the new building is built, or they move somewhere else, or you know everything is under discussion. But they'd have to bring that to town vote. Everything correct? would have to be yes. No, I'm, ju I'm just curious because we'll, you know, wondering if that would happen before our, uh, before we're called to well, uh, accept this grant or right during it because. It's going to happen before we're called. It has to happen. Yeah. So it, okay. it, it, will, it either will happen when the library comes up for a vote or before. Okay. Right. Because the whole. The whole thing has to be just worked out. But we also have no idea when we're going to get called. Right. right. Okay. So that would give us, you know, that could put the town in a position of having six months to figure out what to do. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, I have some news as well. I last week I uh, ran the Shaker Lane spring scholastic book fair um, we usually have that in the spring to raise money to give to the librarian and the reading specialists to help stock their rooms and libraries with <coughs> books and uh, we did very well and we were able to make forty two hundred dollars that we can use to buy um, books through scholastic to supply those classrooms and the library Nice. Um, I, since the last meeting, was really involved with the fundraising committee with the um, with the mini golf event. So that was that that took up a lot um, of my sort of 
library time in the last couple of weeks. Um, but in addition to that, I have done a couple of book events. I was, um, was telling folks earlier here that I was um, fortunate enough to be at Russell Street yesterday, speaking to all of the fifth graders about reading and books and writing. And it was really nice. It was really nice talking to fifth graders. I don't know if people have fifth graders out there, but it was a really nice day. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be talking to fourth graders, third graders, and second graders. So lots of little tin kids in the next couple of weeks. So, And the funny thing is, at this point, sort of, uh, just library, I, think I get introduced as library author and library trustee, <laughs> which I think is kind of cool. So I feel like I have like, I have like a big badge that's library trustee. I don't have my badge today, actually. But that's been the last month. So. I don't have anything to report. Nothing from Sam or Helen? Okay, let's, then let's move on to the director's report. Uh, the library has purchased a subscription to AZ World Foods. It's a database of recipes and other information about foods from around the world. Uh, it will go live soon, and the cost was $150 annually. Um, so, so we should hold a program where we, someone cooks things out of it or have a, something, you know? Less than our, somebody does one's called Cooking the Books. <laughs> and it's really, <laughs> yeah, and they have, um, one book spotlighted with the recipe from that kind of thing. Everyone does, it brings the food together and they have, like one meeting here, this is what we're going to do for a topic and the next meeting is you bring the food and you all share it. So um, it's been popular in some other places. I don't know how it would go here. Mm -hmm. you know. um, the new shelving has gone up in the children's room. Um, we, we closed the children's room for about a week. Uh, it required more shelving than we thought. Um, there was an, enough shelving I guess when the guy came in and counted correctly, so we needed more shelving, plus we had to keep some shelving, and um, also we needed some backers so that the books don't fall through the middle. So we're taking that out of um, state aid, and then also um, Diane has some money from the Hoffman grant that she gets every year, so she's going to use some of that. Too. And then, um, Can I ask you a question, Sam? Do you yeah. feel like it was, does what it, projected to do, like having the additional shelving is, did it solve the problem that we needed to solve? Does it feel like? Just kind of made it taller. Kind of make it taller. Yeah. <laughs> but there's more space. There's yeah, more room. Yeah, did make some of the shelving shorter so that uh, a wheelchair could fit around because the walls kind of jet out in some places. So we made it so that a wheelchair can fit around it. And there's more room for books right. on the shelves. Right. <laughs> Um, the Ruben Sanka program went well. Um, 35 people were in attendance. Um, I was there. He was an excellent speaker. There were, um, he talked for about 40, 45 minutes and then took questions from the audience for about a, that amount of time, too. So he was very engaging. And, um, and it was a good mixture of, um, there were a lot of uh, teenagers there, too. So, so did he talk about his? road to where he is now? He talked about his life growing up okay. um, and how he, you know, how he got into marathoning and then he had pictures from the London, uh, the London Olympics um, and talked about his training some and, oh, yeah. good, good. and then people asked him all kinds of questions about training in general. Um, I attended an MVL membership meeting on March 27th. Um, they report that two of our ebook databases are going away, uh, Access 360 and Biblioboard. Um, to be honest, it's, it was a decision made by the Massachusetts, Board of, uh, Massachusetts Library System. Um, they're the ones who um, sort of facilitated it for all the libraries in the state, and it was their decision to get rid of it. Um, so we don't really understand why, uh, but from what we understand, it will boost um, overdrive which is the most popular mm -hmm. database anyway. Um, so that's going to go away soon. Um, I attended a meeting with Mark at the Town Hall Study Committee, as we mentioned. Uh, we took a tour of the building. Um, I gave them a tour of the library and talked about everything that we feel is wrong with it and why we need a new library. And then we moved on to the rest of the Town Hall, Park and Rec, School, and um, COA. Um, and then Helen and I attended a presentation on Munis. Uh, Munis is going to be the new financial software system that the town is moving to in July. Um, so Helen and I and Susan, we're all going to have to be trained on it. It's basically how we pay for payroll, pay invoices, 
Um, it's supposed to be much better than what we have now. Um, so we'll see. Of course. <laughs> Fingers crossed we'll on that. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's supposed to be a lot of training about a month beforehand. It goes live in July. Uh, supposedly, uh, patrons will also be able to log into it from home and see different financial information. So. Um, and then for the budget, uh, books, we spent pretty much everything in books and we're started on trust. Um, and we're chugging along on that. We have until July 1st to spend about $20,000. Uh, yeah, about 20000 that we have left to reach tomorrow. So I think it's going pretty well. And then we also have um, about 27% of our salary Month, which, which you guys through here. And this uh, I assume the numbers were down mainly because the children are being closed. Yeah, the children are being closed. We're not. We're also not sure about the front door counter. We think it might it might need a new one, or people are just coming in through the back. Is that, as you can see, there's a huge amount of people that come through that. Like 4,541 came through that, so it's twice. That's interesting. What? But the back door count is more than double. Has that been consistent? Like, is that, is that, since we opened the Since we, yeah? Okay, yeah. interesting. How's our scholarship volunteer doing on his hours? He's doing great. He's always here. He does a Programming. There's movie night next Thursday. Right. There's movie night next Thursday, darkest hour, at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, There's children's movies. Children's movies, Jumanji, and um, for Ferdinand. Uh, check mm -hmm. the website for that. Um, Jen is doing a create a peeps house. Yeah. Where you create a house for peeps. <laughs> <laughs> Check the website for all that stuff. And mm -hmm. I also send out a newsletter. Yeah, our play for adults. That's also good. Mm -hmm. oh, we have another one or? No, we, we have. No, it's in May. May. Yeah, we have a crop circle guy. <laughs> That's going to be cool. Yeah. <laughs> is that, um, where does that fall in the month in, in May? It's late in May. Okay. I think the third week. Okay. I just want to ask Sam. Yes. This, I feel like I asked this before, but I probably forgot what you said. But does schools know about this tutor.com? Yeah, I did. I told uh, Kelly Clunch and you told the principals. Oh, okay. I remember getting an email from, uh, at least in Russell Street, the uh, program. <clears throat> and I think the fifth grade class is planning to come in June. Um, Oh, that's nice. Yeah, why did they do that for the fifth grade? I'm just curious. Um, they asked. Oh, good. <laughs> they asked if they can come and we said sure. Yeah. I think they're quoted books products. They're, if you look at, they always say no views, but I know people are using them. I always feel like they're quoted books yeah. products, which is the universal class, which is, you know, the Indie Flex will say zero, but I know I've used them. So I think it's there how they calculate or something. Yeah. System. Mm. yeah. Mm. I, we have no. You, your museum pass budget is used up. I assume we have nothing that's coming due that we're going to need to fund or. Uh, no, I asked um, for asking to replenish it. That was something I asked for at our friends meeting. Anything else with the director's report? I'm good. 
good. Okay, we're going to move on to old business, MMDT update. Okay, so after what, three, four months, they finally agreed to uh, transfer the money. So um, Bonnie, like the finance director, spoke with a lawyer at the Department of Revenue, and apparently he's come up with this question before at another library. And so their opinion is that the trustees do have control over the Bartholomew account and how it gets transferred into MMDT. Um, so, yeah, so hopefully moving forward, this shouldn't be an issue again. Um, yeah. So now Bonnie's aware of it, Stephen is aware of it. And, and they have not yet transferred the money, actually. But they told us we can go ahead and pay the bills for it, and they'll pay them to submit the bills. And they'll pay them. So I don't know what the holdup is actually putting the money in our account. But, yeah. but they, they told us we could pay the, the, for the furniture, so we did. Do we need to follow up with them? I think you said you had to wait until a certain part of the month before you can do it, so that might be why. Okay. All right. Um, then we will move on to every library. Okay. So I spoke with Patrick Sweeney, and I've been speaking with uh, fundraising committee and friends and to figure out a date that can work for all of us. So we think uh, May 31st will work at 11 a.m. Um, I spoke to fundraising and friends, and they said that you know, some people will try to attend, they'll take a day off from work so that they can come here in a day. Um, if any of the trustees want to come. Um, so, yeah, he, I spoke to Patrick. He said that he thinks May 31st works. Um, I just have to speak to him about the travel um, expenses and I guess put him up somewhere. I don't know how we're going to figure it out, but we'll figure it out. And then, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So, May 31st is the date. Of the I think an hour to two hours. He, um, I, I think that we can like fill up his day. I think we can, um, because I was thinking we should, the trustees sh should meet with him, um, and the strategic planning folks should. I mean, I, I think we should get as much out of him as possible, um, and plan a nice full day for him because I know that you're this is a staff meeting that's at 11 but um, he just needs to present to the staff before we open and then whatever happens after that because we open at 1 oh, okay. so and then um, the friends are also going to do their appreciation luncheon for the staff that day so every year the, the friends um, make the, the staff food and to, to show appreciation for what we do. So, uh, yeah, so that'll be that day. Any other questions about that? Okay. Littleton Community Read. All right, so um, at the last meeting, Jenna asked that we do a Littleton Community Read. So um, I contacted some of my fellow directors and the staff and uh, some of the books that he suggested that they've done it for their community reads. Um, they can give us ideas for programs. They even have books that we can borrow. So these are the books that they suggest, uh, suggested. Um, so um, unless anyone has any issues with any of them, I'd like to put them up for a vote by the town so that we can see which book gets chosen. Sound good. Uh, we just should fl make sure we're flagging whether they're fiction or nonfiction. Yeah. Um, because a lot of them sound like they're on the borderline. Okay. You're just gonna put up like a survey monkey or? You guys have done this before in the past, right? It was before I came. You guys do a survey monkey. 
we did survey monkey, we did little voting ballot boxes and we had to count them. Um, we had, um, <laughs> at one point we had little stickers too, just like they did over at the, um, the planning meeting that time and people could vote that way. It was down at the front. I would do either the survey monkey or the stickers. I would, they're much easier to count them. Do we need to make a motion and how we're going to no. go forward? Okay. All right, we're going to move on to new business, library security. So Dave asked me to put this on the agenda. Um, just in, so a few months ago, um, a patron stabbed someone in the library. Winchester. Winchester. It was Winchester yeah. Public library, and it was two patrons actually. One who came and stabbed a, a young lady in her twenties. Oh. So, um, and then with all the active shooting things going on, we have had active shooter training from Doctor uh, from Detective Pablo Fernandez from the Littleton Police Department. Um, the town also installed cameras in the building. Um, Beyond that, I'm not sure what else you have in mind, Dave. Do you have anything in mind? Or? Well, just just so that I guess just so that we could say we we're not we're not flat footed on this. At least at least find out if the police have anything. Or, I mean, we've had this in the past. Maybe just maybe just ask the police station if they have any ideas on on what the library should do should that happen. A plan. So when was the last time we you had the training? And it was about a year ago. So there's new staff and maybe we'll have one. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's still some issues about about certain doors not being able to be locked. Okay, and it doesn't seem to have solutions because it doesn't come up to code. But there's got to be some ways to fix some of those things. So maybe just a maybe just a an overall look at the whole situation. Yeah, I, w I would suggest working with Keith or uh, Anthony and having them look at the building as a whole, too, right? Yes. Because it's kind of hard to do an active lockdown on just no, the I, library. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. And, and if we would, if we're the ones that initiate the conversation, that's fine. Yeah. Maybe it should be the whole building. I mean, because we, we have exits into the rest of the building, so that means there are entrances from that building to here, so I guess it would should and, and I don't know if there's plans on active shooter on how to shut down the elevator access mm -hmm. or anything like that, or what would need done, so. Actually, maybe it should be, you know, maybe it should be Keith, it should be the spearhead, but at least we could ask and get the ball rolling. I think in the elevator, we have had two instances of little kids going down the elevator by themselves. Um, the first time was a two-year-old. Oh, no. He went down on a Saturday. Uh, we think he just got in, and then the elevator just went because he couldn't even reach the, reach the button. <laughs> uh, George, our maintenance guy, he found him. Oh, um, my God. And George brought him back on. <laughs> <laughs> by accident, he found him. Yeah. Just yeah. Wow. Um, And then the second time, really the parents responsibility to keep track of the kids and in both instances it was the parent just wasn't watching their kid um, but just okay so I'm glad they're okay yeah they're both okay yeah. nothing mm -hmm. this one for a little ride <laughs> can I do something else under new business absolutely um, with the town meeting coming up we should have a table at the town meeting with information about the library project uh, with a, like a you know a board maybe a plans and a <laughs> <laughs> handout and um, I sent an email to Diane Crory and Tim Goddard moderator and he, Tim said fine go ahead so um, uh, I guess we should just put that on the calendar with something to do and I'm willing to work on like print materials to hand out 
um, and we can talk about who else, who wants to. What's the gym of the date is? Is this the 7th? May 7th. I don't know. I don't know. I believe it's that, yeah, so our meeting is on the, it's the Monday after our meeting on the 3rd, so. Okay. Is this going to be information yeah, about what would be in the new library or Just more to, like why we need a new library? I think all of the above. Update, I mean, like, a, an update for people because it will ultimately be going to town meeting and these are the people that will probably be voting on it. And a lot of people, I think people need an update. Where are we in the process? Um, and you know, just to give everybody a quick overview of where it stands and where we're at. Why do we need this? How long has this been in the works? Just so they can start thinking about it if they haven't been thinking about it. And maybe we should allow them to look at the library's individual project itself and drill it down to the dollar amount that would actually affect the taxpayer. Because we put a real number down to that amount and you realize you're only asking for maybe, you know, four or five million dollars, that's putting that number next to it, I think gives people, they know what they're going to get for that amount from the library. Yeah, um, I talked to about the number thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that eventually will help, but people at MBLC and Patrick both said, just don't put it at our number yet, just because okay. we don't know. Mm -hmm. And if we make a mis we don't want to make a mistake. Yeah. Um, they both advised against doing that at this part of the discussion until we know. It's also hard to look at the library in a vacuum if the whole building's going to have to be renovated at the same time. Yeah, no, I just think you have to, it can only eat an elephant with one bite, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. So does, if anybody wants to work on that with me, I will. Oh. I feel like we already feel like <laughs> so a place to start. So okay. like we've already yeah, got yeah, some yeah. stuff. So we just need to all right maybe refine, con yeah. Yeah, condense, and yeah, if you need anything. Yeah, because this is what other big projects have done. Like the fire department station, they had a table. Yeah, and they I think were. That's really. I think we should do. Do that. you feel like a member of the staff should be there as well? Or a, a member of the friends, or is it just it solely might, trustees? I don't think I would it. Say trustees. I trustees. Okay. If, if someone wants to help, then they can't. But you can't require the staff to be there. Or the, you can ask the friends, but yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't require, but uh, I think a staff could provide great perspective if they wanted to join. And yeah. So, would anybody like to make a motion? Do we need to make a motion? No, we don't. Did we don't? That? Okay. Maybe a table. Go for it. Do we have a table? Um, what do you the library has tables, right? Do we have a, do we need to bring? Can you fold them too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got you got a lot of them. Okay. Anything else that someone feels the need to discuss as new business? Okay. Um, and we've completed everything on the agenda, so if someone would like to make a motion to adjourn yeah. i'll make a motion to adjourn second all in favor aye, aye. aye. Um, this meeting of the reuben hoare library trustees is now adjourned our next meeting is on may 3rd 2018. i will not